Old McDonald had a farm, and on that farm, these Cuna spuds are starting to grow. Not quite ready for harvest. We have a ways to go until we're national contenders. 0 and 12 in our inaugural season, 3 and 9 in our second season. Revisiting memory lane, Mitch was one of the only recruits we brought in during year one, and he started baking, dotting up the opposition for our school's first ever win. Expect a full plate for him in year two. The one two punch is gonna go crazy. It's Sal Jizzy time, and he likes his potatoes with a little extra jizz. Sour cream, that is. Sal will leave nothing but a sour taste for defenders who try to stop him. I've seen the comments. You all are mashing it up on this series. Soak it up with King Sponge and hit that subscribe button just like Dean Rawlings and Ramon Sahara want to subscribe to Old McDonald's program. Tater up. Let's add them to the board. Going down the list, looking for more prime candidates. Once again, still dealing with a lot of one and two stars, but there's a few three stars sprinkled in here. And that's exactly what our eyes are set on. Chester Spoon eats potatoes with a spoon. He would be a fun ad. Only two five stars let us put him on the board. Gage Kavka and Danny Berger. Once again, another fitting name. Let's get Berger out here. Gage Kavka, number one player in the nation. Six foot three, 230. Another power back, just like our Sal. Quick preseason recruiting update. Berger did pass the five-star test. Spoon also lived up to the four-star name. Definitely going to be grabbing those guys, as well as three-star gem quarterback, Jarius Ryder. Deron Blaine from the Dallas Cowboys, his younger brother, Taquan Bland. We're going to be trying to get him here. He's a four-star talent, three-star gem. Trayvon Beard looks good, and so did Rodney Mahi. Still struggling with recruiting hours, so I couldn't evaluate a bunch of other three-stars. We're going into our third season, and the committee, once again, is leaving off any potatoes. It's game week in CUNA, Idaho, and they have us rated higher than Indiana. Progression feels a little off because there's no way our team is as good as it looks. 83 overall seems overrated. That last handoff was not our Sal Jizzy. So let's give it to him here and see what the new running back looks like. Lowering his head, getting through one. Ah, they take him out again on the very next play, but he comes equipped with so many gold badges. This power back has a gold arm bar, so he can throw a mean stiff arm, break tackles, do what he has to do to fight for yards. Looks like he's splitting time with Hardy out here, but that's okay. We'll go across the middle to Cropper, who could not crop dust the opposition. Crop dust let us down, so now we're back on the attack. Brent Aker. Mitch Birmingham looking for year two to be the year he takes a massive leap in his progression as he finds Bell for a touchdown. Cuna on the board. It looks like we have a nice first quarter lead. Maybe this is the year the tide finally turns as Jizzy cannot get past anyone. Two minute drill. Let's see if we can cash in for some first half points. We got a guy out here wide. It's Cropper, but he just overruns that one. Communication is not his strong suit, so we're definitely going to need to work on that as the season progressed. Instead, it's Yolito, a red shirt receiver. Got a star under his name. Definitely going to be keeping my eye on him throughout the course of the season as he looks open again on the corner. Where have you been all of my life? Sal running hard. Underneath it looks like Yolito's gonna dive. What? It literally looked like bro dove and over pursued that football. So that did not help us there. Bell on the other hand says, I got you with 12 seconds left. Let's let Sal take it right up the middle. Arm bar came into effect, but the defense hurried up and tackled him down. So now we have six seconds left. I don't know if it's a good idea to hand it right back up the middle, but that's exactly what we're doing. Sal, please fight. Okay. No points at halftime. That's brutal. I seriously thought Sal was going to be able to strength his way in, but I got to remind myself he is only a freshman. There will definitely be better games in store as we make the second year, third year, fourth year leap with Sal, but that's a good pick by Bayard, one of our own recruits with Old McDonald's hands. All for naught because the team just gave it right back to Indiana, who is already up by one touchdown. We have to hold. Going for it on fourth down, they're sending the running back in motion, and it looks like the receiver broke free. Another third and goal. I'm no expert, but I knew that was a big possession. Our hopes of coming back honestly rely on this drive right here. Way to hold on, though. Now we can hand it off and see if the freshman has what it takes to cut and fight and get down. I want to see some glimpses of greatness from Sal as that stiff arm looked mean. Offensive line sold. Not like we got many positive yards on that last run. The offensive line did not help us by holding. This time Sal is going to cut up for nine. Massive third down. In the corner over here, Bell is wide open. Touchdown. Incredible. We are now suddenly in this game with a chance to make a stop. Not really sure why Indiana is running this extremely fast hurry up offense here. Oh, I got you. It's hurry up really fast 
path to the line, but don't snap the ball. Clearly trying to chew the clock and end this game right here. This very well could be it. Third in five. Anyone going to make a stop? Anyone want to step up and be a hero? Not today. Our last time out on the line. This is it. And the tackle was not completed, but we still get fourth down. This is the game right here. Hoosiers want to go for it. Get the conversion. They will not get it. So we have drama in the first week of action here. This is the drive to get some points and get ourselves right back in this one. Third and nine. What's it going to be? Who is it going to be? No one. Well, here goes nothing, Mitch. Fourth and nine. Look at your route. See what you like. And maybe not going to happen. Brutal missed opportunity. That was a close one. 21-14. CUNY Kings fall in week one. Maybe we just needed the gold uniforms in the gold rush classic here in our second matchup against Wyoming. Wyoming's honestly not that far from Idaho, so they've made their track out to CUNA, and now we're ready to run wild and make our track against them. Bringing it to a third and short. We're going to just launch one out as we're getting hit. Could not hold it. Old McDonald is an aggressive coach. He's not going to punt it even when the ball Ball is this far back into our own end zone kind of got lucky there gonna try a little trickery a little reverse pass because why not get a wide open receiver it's cropper he couldn't put on a move but a first down's just as nice beautiful execution on the trickery has got us at midfield back up to sell fighting his way forward i need sal to prove he's a big time running back before i can start calling him by his nickname jizzy and i like that run unsuccessful opening drive it's been a defensive battle back and forth against the cowpokes first season not seeing evan sabota out there so it's a new quarterback in town and i wonder if he's any good clearly good enough to get 10 points before half that's something we haven't even gotten a single point before half not really going our way this game they're even reviewing that last catch i thought he was fine didn't think there was much to review but the refs disagreed and now we have a first down here handoff up the middle beautiful here we go third and nine i think sal should be able to spring free let's throw it to him he didn't hold on hello fourth down my old friend it's me again let me turn it over. Mitch and the Potato Kings need points desperately. Is this going to be the drive? We can finally snap the cold streak. Mark Boyles denied us with a sack, and now we have to respond on this drive. Having trouble with our receivers securing the ball, that is a difficult conversation to have and what in the deflected interception touchdown was that on pace to lose another gold rush classic when will the tide turn fourth in 15 ice cold i have not many other opportunities the offensive line what you're hurting my guy mitch out here and hurting our chances to win clearly only fighting for pride we're not winning this one down 24 zip we just want something to say we came and showed up and did something right and even this chance is looking bleak out here come on man shut out by by our rival Wyoming. This was unfortunate. Keeping things rolling in this one, we have the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors next. They are 74 overall. We have like a 10 overall advantage, which is crazy to me since we're not that good. I'm having a hard time trying to figure out what exactly it is right now. Maybe we pre-scripted and thought we would run the ball a bit more. Maybe the guys are just fearful and scared to let old McDonald down and don't want to be kicked off the team. I don't know what it is, but we're stinking. Already down 14-0 for Mitch in the kings we have to step it up right now come on ask and you shall receive first and goal sal go ahead and get your first touchdown in college football there he is number one he wants to eventually be the number one runner in all the land defense having a hard time stopping this hawaii unit as they're gonna get dropped on this one so the tide is swinging Cade bloom what a blooming young potato old mcdonald's gonna task him with a another challenging sack that we needed and we got it here we go 99 and now we're getting the ball back right before half fans loving it in the rain you can't stop them from coming just under 30 seconds i'm gonna hand it off to sal brings up second and goal scrambling to the right delivering to bell on the run touchdown it's all tied up bell has seriously come to play he's like the only highlight on the offense right now and yes when i say only highlight i am including like all of the last three weeks no one else has really done much mitch is actually underperforming in my opinion and i do have guys on the bench i could go to if it gets dire in third and 20 this drive is looking a little dire out here is it not we're not in field goal range for the leg of our kicker so we're just gonna run a double post and hope someone gets over Open. that whole last drive the offensive line could not give me any protection as bell deeks him out left and right can he go almost one man to beat back to midfield down by three with two minutes left 
I need some positive plays. Sal has carried the rock 16 times for 20 yards. That does not feel very good for a guy with elite dev. And now our own teammates are sabotaging plays. Literally got in the way of that one. I want Bell to step it up right here because he's the only one I can trust. He averages five catches, 71 yards, and a touchdown through the early season. And just get that one out of here. Offensive line needs significant attention. Thankfully on this one, Sal is going to bust it upfield. Go to the change of pace back here. Hardy, let him get a slip screen, get some blocks in front of him. And there we go. We're in business. Number 22, Brent Aker is undersized. I see him right there on the line. He's going to have to throw a block here did not work my man to get him playing time he was actually playing up at the tight end position when we had to change positions and it's probably because of that his ability to run routes guess who's back in this game kuna and we can finish off the fourth quarter comeback here on a fourth down stop hit stick fumble hartley recovers and he's gonna run down the sideline can you believe it folks kuna kings is vic Victorious. Idahoans and potato farmers alike celebrating to this one. Hawaii has a long flight back home and they're really going to have a long fight back home after this brutal defeat. Fighting to the final whistle, we really needed the insurance score right here. With time expiring, we win by five. First win of year number three right here against Hawaii. We can maybe go on a run now that some players are starting to get a little hotter. Who knows? I'm hoping six wins is not too unrealistic because this team wants to find a bowl game. Maybe the famous Idaho Potato Bowl would be fitting would it be fitting would it not big wins and finally some big motion for kuna kings man we got kavka getting the lead on the number one player in the nation i'd love to bring him in and have a one-two punch with jizzy danny burger's more of a slow burn but we got the lead too and i'm trying to go pedal to the metal with chester spoon we gotta beat out michigan so i schedule him on a week four visit against nevada and if we win that's wraps need to get to Quan bland out here he has a week five visit with minnesota and i don't have enough points to get him out any sooner he's not really digging any of our school grades so i can't give him a hard sell because he doesn't like any of that trevon beard should be here any day now the three-star gem has quite the nice beard it goes with his name well look around the mountain west it's a little too soon to call anything but new mexico is the only team without a loss yet just kidding i see a 1-0 unlv and 1-0 colorado state the craziest part that our team at 83 overall apparently looks like the best team in the mountain west on paper but we know that is not the truth it's year three of the rebuild we had the cupcake roster the hardest roster to start with i don't really understand how we're already this good apparently but i know one thing's for sure we're not really playing like a good team at the moment so maybe we'll get right against the aztecs and keep the win streak alive the aztecs are zero and two to start their young season and they hate to see that you know what's worse than zero and two going zero and three and i'm sorry that we're gonna have to give it to him big third and eight here for mitch let's see if he can cut where did that linebacker just come from it's time to lock in and go ahead and get the ball to bell through a crazy interception to a practically hidden linebacker now we're down first and goal you already know we got to feed the man at the one he has the strength to just run right through aztecs got a good quarterback out here with the star under his name but not good enough for a conversion holding him to three points that's a win for our defense that's a loss for the offense what the my man just took off without even looking for the ball and he was wide open which is the unfortunate part two minutes here to go brent aker looks like he has separation touchdown cuna kings back to work you know who it's bell not really happy with sal's yards per carry at this point in the season but we got a lot of opportunity to improve it my man is such a good player with elite dev like i can only imagine what he'll be doing in two three years but for year one purposes man there are definitely some freshman concerns if we're talking about concerns well there are a lot of them on this team in general 99 problems but a pass interference ain't one sal's ready to make them pay for what they have done give him the arm bar all right that was not as epic as i was hoping it could be so i'm just gonna let one rip to no man's land third and four eight seconds left i'm tasked with almost an impossible mission out here but holy just kidding he dropped it i thought he was able to secure it so i'll just try cropper this time see if we can crop dust anyone ah halftime well okay i mean i can't be mad about what i'm seeing right here go ahead and give him that arm bar and he's injured sal jizzy looks ripped up on the ground in pain rest up my boy i need you back out there 
you're our only hope. A foot contusion, it definitely could have been worse, so thank goodness. Let's go ahead and do something big for him. Back to Bell. Yeah, you see that, right? Literally one play later, he's back into the backfield out here to run the rock. My man is Iron Man out here, and I'm just gonna take off with Mitch. Touchdown, big old Mitch. Textbook smash mouth football getting us right down the field. And let's go ahead and top it off with a little strike. Scrambling to our right, lobbing one in. He caught that. That should have been picked. I'll keep it a buck. That pass was into danger zone and thankfully we're now going to be able to go ahead and try to finish this one off with just two minutes aztecs are putting up a fight against us so kudos to them for hanging in there till the very end until you get introduced to sell this could be one of the most boneheaded play calls in old mcdonald history right here fourth and five in our own end zone thankfully don't have to worry about it so it looks like the cuna kings are gonna walk away with a two-point win over San Diego State. Aztecs had a little comeback brewing. It fell short at the end. So hold on now. Kuna's now on a two game win streak. And whoop, there it is. Trayvon Beard, our first commit in year three. With 80 points freed up, you already know I'm going to go schedule some more visits against opponents like Utah State. So bring in Kafka. Danny Berger, U2, and we're bringing him in on both A plus interests. For four star defensive tackle, Spoon, he's on campus against Nevada, and we need to make this a visit he'll never forget. To Spoon Feed Spoon, the royal treatment. We brought out the gold unis. And and the cursive script helmet and what in tarnation that has got to be one of the worst plays i've ever run in college football are you serious i thought it was gonna be a handoff we end up throwing it and i was delayed pick six i'm gonna double take what i said earlier i had no idea that was how the play worked out and look at us in trouble our kicker does not exist so i don't necessarily feel good about this play call but we had to go for it before spoon gets bored and go gets a spoon in the concession stand we're gonna have to come back can't have my man getting bored up in here so we need jizzy to come through show him what cuna king football is all about my friend there we go if you like the prospect of coming in and starting as a freshman well heck this is the school for you sal's not in the game it's hardy we're still gonna hand it off because i see a good formation right over here on the left big third and four gonna scramble out to the right we got a man if he can just call it and are you kidding me man making touchdowns look so hard heisman difficulty is usually tough yes but i think we're having an off day to say the least here against nevada like i can't believe some of the bad decisions we've been doing with a lot of football left in this game we can turn it up in an instant hardy unguarded number 13 just taking his sweet old time that will amp up the home fans i'm literally gonna see if lightning strikes twice and run the same exact play is someone actually gonna cover the running back this time yeah they do second and 10 though they weren't ready for my man over here bell with 30 seconds left we have some room to work so let's just pick up the first down hurry up the boys and let it rip again that clock is ticking and ticking fast i'm not gonna lie bell maybe you can take us to the spot where it makes sense coach says go for a field goal i wonder if i can take just a quick strike though let's go ahead and test that theory and quick strike one second left timeout 20 yard field goal or first in goal one play for glory i think we're going with the play for glory and sal is wide open threw it way too late i'm a clown bro this is the biggest clown game i've actually had i'm playing like a bot playing like a bot you usually don't get rewarded so uh, I'm not surprised if Spoon wants to go away after this. Could not give Spoon the game he was hoping for out of the Cuna Kings, but hold on, never say never. This one is not done yet. And as Justin Bieber said, never say never. It's fourth and five. We can still very much be in this thing. Hit your boy, Bell. He did it. What's the flag, though? Ruffin, the passer, Nevada implosion, huh? And now check us out. Big game, Mitch has led his team right back within three points. Let's take the punt return and go ahead and give Spoon a show. Like I said, he'll never forget. Gonna start off the drive with a slant. He's got space. It's Yolito. With a minute 40, I think we got time still to hand the ball off here and there as Sal just has a lane. Second and nine, back to the ground in pound. Not trying to settle for three. We want to go for the win. In exactly as we go to hardy first down let's keep fighting still got two timeouts if we're getting anxious here but i think we have time to get around the defender let mitch cook just a little bit putting it back in mitch's hands here with a read option he's gonna keep it and he has a lane let's just slide down no point in getting too crazy at the moment as Sal with a stiff arm, let's call timeout. Coach says we should hand it off. I don't know if that's what's gonna get the job done for the win, but maybe we trust in our elite running back up the middle. Final timeout called. I feel like we have to take the 19 yard field goal. Honestly, let's just take it to overtime. Here we are in overtime with a reverse to start things off. That fooled no one. Instead, that put us in terrible position right here. I hate that 
that happened. Big catch there, big play. Let's go with the read option, see if we can pick up two. Right up the middle, there we go. Can't believe we've come all the way back in this one and still have a chance. Mitch on the power, get around there. The power worked well, so why not go with it again? Got blockers, but he couldn't block for me. You know it's bleak when Coach McDonald's calling for verticals here this close to the end zone. So I'm gonna put Yolito on a zig. Maybe he'll spring free from the defender's grasp, and he really does not. They recommend we take three, but I darn well know if we don't get a touchdown, Nevada will and beat us. So I'm sending it, even though we just lost the game right here, unless something miraculous can happen, but there wasn't a chance. I knew we were not gonna be able to stop Nevada. And just to play here, I might feel like the world's biggest fool because we get the third down stop. I guess should have took the three points when we could have got it, man. That is such a bummer. The battle wins. Once again, I doubled down on that being one of the silliest clown-like performances I've ever had. Bad decisions, bad calls everywhere from McDonald. I don't know how we did it, but Chester Spoon is in. And Taekwon Bland, let's go. This is a great week after all, despite the loss. If I thought this last week was important, well, this game's even more important. Utah State is in town and we have a five-star and a four-star visiting. And not gonna lie, I'm definitely inspired to redeem myself in this one. And I'm ready to show Utah State what we're made of. In fact, I'm so inspired that I'm gonna give Bell another chance here to reverse pass. Checking that off the box of never running that play again, check. Sal, on the other hand, check the box on a big game incoming. My dude is amped up and ready to go, following a block, fourth and two quickly, up the middle, follow the blockers, come on, get through. Come on, you're killing old McDonald. He did not enjoy that. Time for redemption on this one here. Gonna go ahead and float one up. Look at the separation, Yolito down the sideline. That's what I'm talking about, and Mitch is gonna finish this one off, lower the head. All right, never mind. that is some scary, scary play right there for our quarterback to lower his head. Third and goal, what's it gonna be? Let's just go quickly to the tight end. Seriously getting flustered right now by Utah State defense. Fourth and goal, this has to be it. Scrambling to our right. Let's go ahead and try the corner, but that was predictable. Shaking it off in a big way here, going for a big strike. This time I don't wanna get too cute at the end zone, so let's go give it to Sal, let him put in the work. Boom, yes sir. He felt that one, rock him to sleep. Third and six, Bell, beautiful touch. Handing it right up, back off to number one in the red zone. Yes, sir, he had a convoy on that. And he's feeling himself with his second touchdown of the game. With a one touchdown cushion, I'm looking to keep it that way and then add some on the offensive side of things, bazinga. Just a little dart to number seven, you know. Hats off to the Potato Kings on defense, for real, for real, as they have been playing textbook football. The recruits that are visiting right now are enjoying our famous spud on a stick treat as they're watching a treat of a game. For real though, down in Idaho, you can customize your potato any way you want it, just like Sal wants a house call. Giving Sal a breather, he's two yards away from the big 100, which that would be his first one. You best believe I'm going to feed it to him again because I want him to go ahead and crack that threshold. Third and three, they're stacking the box. We're gonna slip screen it to him anyway and have a wide open field. Coach McDonald's got his team in chew clock mode, but Cropper says, wait, I got one last crop dusting. Utah State might need to consider burning their timeouts, which they do, so we'll go ahead and pound it right up the middle again. This time, Sal breaks free touchdown. I was complimenting the defense earlier, but all of a sudden, I don't know what they're doing, letting the Aggies back in it. Unfinished business. We need to kill the game right now. And with that, we can take a knee victory formation. We got the big win and even bigger two recruits that might commit or at least consider us much more with a huge bonus. Three ticks up. Sal's first ever player of the game, 124 yards, three touchdowns. That's what I like to see. The performance has us on the edge of glory with Gage and Danny. We're literally a sliver a sliver away so it's almost guaranteed next week so much a guarantee that i feel comfortable taking away 25 additional points from both players and i'm gonna put it into someone that needs it like how about justice brown we haven't put any points into the man and now we're finally starting to lose ground on him which is a great time for us to swoop in, give him the hard sell, and lock him up. On to one of our toughest matchups outside of Indiana in week one. It's the Fresno State Bulldogs. So far, I'm feeling surprised that we are actually three and three of the season. Surprise does seem like the best adjective to really describe it as Bell up and over to him. He is getting a big chunk. Already past midfield on just that play, and look at Hardy 
get shifty. It's time to see if Mitch means business today. Fourth and four. This is a big play looming over the middle to Cropper. Where in the world was that going? You blink and you're already down in this game, 17 to zero. Mitch is just hurrying up, trying to do anything he possibly can, like throw one up to big old Cropper and it's not working. It's hard to say that really anything is working in today's game. Maybe a bell could change it. Pass midfield. We got to step on our man delivering in time in the face of pressure. Hello, end zone. Good to see you and smell you again. Six seconds left, five seconds left. I want to smell the end zone one more time here before half. So let's scramble to our right and just tuck it and run. Touchdown as clock expires. Go ahead and give us a second one. And now we're back within three. Fresno State red hot in the first half is kind of stalled out here in the second half. That's right, down by three. We have a chance to come back in this thing and go for the win. Right before the two minute warning, we get the snap off. We're just gonna drop it underneath the cropper. That's a first down. Perfect. Let's go ahead and step it up. We got a guy on our tail, breaking one tackle, fumbling. Thankfully, Aker was there. Save the game, save the day. That's what I'm talking about. I'm ready for a little spud attack here. Aker going it out. He's got it. Yes, the tight end. Our nimble tight end, Brent Aker, not the typical tight end build has been keeping this thing alive. Need the drive to continue to stay alive. So what's it going to be? A little bomb to Cropper? I think so. You've got to fight for your right to party with the potatoes and this should be pay dirt now we can say it's gonna be pay dirt up the middle sal falls in another game we came back which is awfully surprising to me it's never over till the final whistle and fresno state's got all their timeouts they can do us a favor here and kiss those timeouts goodbye because the linebacker was there for the interception allegro flexing on them dogs man our linebacker's the real dog out here and he gets a full steady diet of pig skin and potato sweet sweet victory yeah cuna kings up in here get their fourth win in through seven games in this season we have a better record than we did last year this is actually on pace to be our best season yet and the steady progression continues here we go it's time to bring them out starting off with valami nakang from new jersey safety is here chris Bowman Co, middle linebacker. And boom, there it is. The first five-star commit in CUNA King history. Danny Berger wants a side of fries with that. Gage Kovka, the number one ranked player in all of the nation, has decided to come to CUNA, Idaho and play for the Potato Kings. This is exactly what old McDonald was preaching ever since he got the job. He was ready to turn this Idaho town into a powerhouse. He saw Spoon and then he said, heck, let's throw Kavka on there. I want these guys and he got them. Liking how this thing is shaping up early in the season. I got my points now allocated to a new batch of good players. Believe it or not, we finally have a road game. It feels like an eternity that homestand was. And I'm not sure how we got away with the schedule we did because getting seven games in a row at home is like the ultimate advantage no wear and tear from travel the the mid-season blues don't really hit you when you're at home every single game in fact the guys feel pretty fresh going into this matchup on the road against the rams colorado state so far having a pretty good season at three and two they would love to get the home win here and go to four and two but i think cuna has other ideas it starts with playing some sound football as they fake the jet touch pass that actually was surprising to see defense swarms it holds it to four two straight field goals and back-to-back -back possessions for the rams we just want to get ourselves a good sustainable drive and the colorado state rams know a thing or two about sustainable programs at their academic institute how about a sustainable drive and pound from the jizzy master that's right he had a good run there let's go ahead and feed him again on the fake jet touch off to sell could not get a block yet he slips and slides that play got busted i'm surprised we actually stood up and actually had a chance that one no chance about it it's money all cash money on that one tough sledding against the rams defense they have a really good line that's holding us down and okay our running back hardy here looks wide open i'd be a fool not to throw it to him they're stacking everyone and their mother on the line here so let's cap it off to our big old tight end ain't no way animations i think did us dirty that's right i'm blaming it on the animations but this was a friendly one touchdown all out of timeouts it's third and six rams want to hand it off and ice this thing out we'll get another chance ah who am i kidding they want to go for it on fourth and five so they effectively want to end everything right here right now make a play on defense no it really came down to right there right then 
An unfortunate way to go out. 26-21 Rams look like a good team in the Mountain West. The back and forth rocky ride continues after we lost two, one, two, lost one, one, two, lost one. With five and three Duke on deck, two and six James Madison, and then five and three FAU before finally capping it off with a Mountain West finale at Air Force. Just need to win two of these games to be bowl eligible. And based on records alone, maybe James Madison and Air Force, the path is there for us just like the path here for some of the these players looking for awards. Jackson Arnold right now is projected to be the player of the year. But right behind him is Duke Blue Devil receiver Brett Stinson. So we'll need to look out for this guy this week. For the Heisman race, you can practically copy and paste that list we just saw and smack it right here. As projections stand in the early college football playoff bracket, we have UAB as a four seed. That's interesting. In terms of the Mountain West, some teams have really picked it up like Nevada, UNLV, and Boise State. The Gem State grudge match is in a breather year, which just feels wrong. Let's pack our bags and catch our flight to North Carolina to see what Duke is all about. And here they come out of their tunnel, ready to make a splash. They have a Heisman candidate in a sophomore receiver. Here we go, playing in a big stadium, a raucous crowd for the first time in a while. CUNA is a small farm-like stadium. With the small Idaho population, we don't really play in front of crowds quite like this, although I spot a few alumni traveling to this game. I see them back there in the top left. Let's make their trip to North Carolina worth it. They wanna see action, we'll give them action, starting with Brent Aker with a spin. Ooh, that would have been cool. If we could have spun around four guys, that would have been insane. I think I've seen some Quinshawn Judkin highlights of that exact thing happening. Second and four, back to the ground game. Hardy's got a hole. Little one-two punch, just marching our way right down this field. And now we're taking off to our left dumping it to jizz and on fourth down we're gonna go ahead and go for it with a read option mitch trying to keep it could not get enough blocks malik murphy over here for duke must be a pretty good quarterback right now he's in year three while we have his team down to zero points we have to take advantage of that opportunity and score some of our own now our second chance for points and we're gonna go ahead and go for it again on fourth down no one else than Bell. Birmingham's getting really cold, and he just needs points. That will warm him up toastily. Y'all ever tried cold potatoes? I don't think they're that good. So let's go ahead and warm our boy up and drop a dot right into the bucket. That's Bell, and he is so out of there. Little skirt to the right for emphasis. Malik Murphy's starting to respond, going toe to toe with us as Birmingham is also ready to battle. We don't come all this way not to put on a show, so that's exactly what we see here today. Third and inches, Mitch is ready to do it himself. Gonna read this and take the power, get the block, cut left, back to the right, get another block. He's going and he's gone. That was money. They don't call our guy Money Mitch for no reason. That's exactly why they do it. Up by eight, threatening again. This game game could go south for Duke any minute. They are five and three, and the last thing they expected was a CUNA Idaho team to do this type of magic on them. Oh man. Honestly, that's what Duke gets when their best receiver was talking smack on social media all week long, blowing up his DM saying Mitch is not that guy. It's clear to see Money Mitch was angry about that and let it show on the field because on the final whistle, CUNA Kings come on the road, upset the Blue Devils. That is what I'm talking about. Year three, glow up, and year two, glow up for Mitch. Five and four, one win away from bull eligibility. Will James Madison be the next victim? I sure hope so, and I'm telling you right now, the home crowd is gonna erupt if we can get six wins. It honestly would put us ahead of schedule as Old McDonald did not expect his guys to be in a bowl game with three years under the belt. Super tight position here. Just had to punt it away and now play some defense. Oh yeah, we got him underneath. That's Brent Aker and he's got some jets. He's ready to turn it up. James Madison is two and seven. And sometimes when the momentum is not going your way, you can just tell. So I feel bad for these guys and I hope they can turn it around, but obviously they're not going to turn it around against the CUNA Kings. That's for sure. As there are no plans of letting up whatsoever touchdown south going back with a fake jet touch pass they never know when it's going to hit him just like the defensive lineman all over our grill on the last one and now the read option works really well for the qb but he can't get past our defenders it took three of us i'm surprised the big boy had the strength to withstand those hits as the running back fought and got it james madison has knocked in three field goals so that's cool and all for them but we're looking for a touchdown. The Nebraska boy with plenty of experience in the cornfield, looking to be a hero. Show me what you got right here, right now. I need to see nails from Mitch and 
That's what I'm talking about. Calling up the X dagger. We have him across the middle. It's Cropper. Looking for a heavy dose of crop dust on this one. There he is again. Acrobatic catch. Giving him a rest. It's true freshman Vilma on the outside there. He didn't get any separation, so I didn't throw it to him. Back to Brent. First down. Let's hurry it up. Clock is expiring. Three, two. Uh-oh. This is going to be our last chance, so we better make it count, and it's not. Pretty rough clock management, to be honest, on that last one. This one, I think that's Cropper leaving a trail of crop dust as he dropped it. Are you out of your mind? 18. Think about what you've done. Back in the saddle over the Dukes. No thanks to Cropper. I can tell you that much. Jizzy walking it all the way in. Fumbled it out of bounds. Really unbelievable from Sal. He better be getting a lot of spankings from coach. JMU's really going for it rather than taking their three points and they got the conversion touchdown. This game's over. Sal is in the doghouse. I'm personally going to hand deliver him to that doghouse after this game. I just seriously can't believe the outcome of this one make it make sense we knock off a good duke team then lose to two and seven jmu really really sold it in this one a couple more commits like four star emmanuel dykes that's what's up and jamal keller four star right guard maybe these guys will protect sal from entering the doghouse again at least ali mccrary got player of the week trying to distract myself from that loss in the recruiting board here hard selling it on mitch bloom we got his cousin aiden bloom right here as well wouldn't mind snagging a family duo of bloom boys as they would fit right in on the potato culture heck maybe they can be the ones to bring potato king football in full bloom on the road against the florida atlantic owls we get to head to the east coast and then soak up some sun out there doesn't bother me or the idaho players as they get to go to the beach and old mcdonald's only letting them go to the beach if they take care of business in today's game so believe me our guys are inspired and we're ready to show what we got plus florida atlantic's already bowl eligible at six and four so we're happy for them but our work is nowhere near being done a healthy dose of sal in the beginning of this game sounds like a a good recipe to me now third and short let's just stay composed deliver a ball didn't get it instead it's fourth and one and we're gonna go ahead and counter with the qb key new life smash mouth football exactly the recipe we were looking for there's Rawlings. That actually was like our first catch with Rawlings, who was, I think, a gem fullback we brought in in the recruiting class last year. But enough about Rawlings. Did you see that linebacker shoot out of a cannon? That was unfortunate. And we're forced to just throw one into no man's land. I think that's roughing the passer. Yes, sir. First down. One way or another, we're going to get you. And this time, we'll go ahead and get you with the corner ball to Bell. Out of bounds. I threw the challenge flag on this one because, yeah, he definitely looked like he had at least one foot down. Seriously. The ref didn't seem as convinced as we did. So now it's third and six. That's okay. Quick out here to Cropper. And he's cropping his way through. Now we're talking. Stepping up. It's Mitch time. On the run. Right back to the man. Eat my crop dust, baby. I'm noticing that when competition's tougher, we play up to the competition. But the same is also true when it's weaker, we play down. Owls just ragdolling us, throwing us into the ground. But that's okay. We'll strike right on back. Touchdown, Ziedler. Bring all the kings out today. It's going to be a harvest. Do I dare say it? Bake them up. Mash them up. Boil them up stack them up it's cuna kings football and we're out to play in a big big way so big in fact we're trying to get our third score of the day sniffed out but points easy come easy go for this unit today as we just dot them up with another one owls where are you i'm so sorry I didn't mean to do this tonight. All right, I'm not sure if that's how the song exactly goes, but you get the gist. We're actually crushing it right now, and I can't find any owl player ready to handle us. Second and one, dumping it to Brent Aker. Holding on, that's tough. Matter of fact, our team is tough right now. Zigging it out, it's Bell to the house touchdown kings a rampage truly fit for a king it's fourth and five the owls are done for i better watch my mouth though fourth and goal they can get some points and they do up by 11 the ever pressing question was it too late for florida atlantic i think it just might as well be within the red zone looking for a little bit more insurance here mitch hold on to that when in doubt jet touch it out here is the pitch Got ahead of the blocker, jeesh. In this case, we'll settle for our field goal. That's money. Owl's really imploding out here, roughing the kicker on that last one. So we get a second chance at a touchdown. Everything they did not want to happen is happening right here, right now. 
put it on them. And there you have it, folks. CUNY King fans, you get to travel home safely, and Old McDonald lets his boys hit the beach after this royal romp. Caesar, one catch, 12 yards, two touchdowns. That's a glitch. I think we got a good amount of spruce trees in Idaho. Freddie Spruce looks to be one of them joining the ranks. Really rough year for the Air Force Falcons. Let's finish off year three in Colorado Springs. There is the flyover, a scenic one in Colorado Springs. This is always a fun environment, high altitude, good place to play. At least the cadets are having a good time because this team not doing too hot. As you can see, <laughs> The fans have cleared the facility. In the final game of the season, besides the student section of cadets, there's no one really here. I'm really left wondering what happened to these guys because Air Force usually is decent year in, year out in the Mountain West. Times are a changing, that's for sure. As CUNA Kings, they're the new real deal. Did you catch it? Our last win made us bull eligible. That is right. Six and five, that seventh win is gonna be extra sweet and ensure we get a bit. The rebuild to me feels like it's happening a little faster than I anticipated. Once again, landing two five stars, a good amount of four stars, and winning six games. Safe to say this episode's been jam-packed with a lot of positive momentum. And yes, of course, I cannot forget the blunders I made earlier in this vid. So I hope that gave you a good laugh because I've really turned it up since that point. And maybe I'll just keep my mouth shut and not say another word. No problem for Money Mitch. He's all about overcoming adversity and he'll at least get three. Miscommunication has our guy Mitch a little cold in this one, but a cross screen to Sal trying to cut it upfield. Easy completions can get momentum back on our side, just like an easy, easy touchdown for number seven. 10-0, I can see how these guys are two and nine. The defense feels suspect at best and the offense here is getting desperate going for it on fourth down. They do convert. So yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to redact what I said earlier about Air Force because they have a big cushion now. Up by six, fourth and two. Air Force really going for it here. Can we stop them on fourth and two? No, nope. out of timeouts. We're on pace to lose it here. A monster sack helps. But up by nine points was way too much to come back. We needed an onside kick to win it. And yeah, we didn't get it. So 15 points in the fourth quarter. It fell short and Air Force, a two and nine team, just like a two win James Madison beats us. The two games I predicted we would have won, we lost. And the two games I predicted we would have lost, we won. This team played up against good competition, played right back down to worse competition. I guess we can look past that and go ahead and welcome in the Bloom boys. Mitch Bloom, Aiden Bloom, let's get to work. Good news for Old McDonald, worked his way out of the hot seat, got a one-year contract extension. Let's go ahead and sign it. And here we go, McDonald feeling rejuvenated with the trust and backing from his community. It may only be one year, but one year is all he needs to prove it with the recruiting class he's bringing in. Now check out Boise State Stomp and UNLV. Final overtime, 45-13. They put up 32 in overtime. Now, I know the screen's definitely bugging right there, but Malachi Nelson is a dog. Nelson was hitting it up with Manny Cherry all day long. Eight catches, four touchdowns. Experts are saying that we'll get the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. My fingers are crossed. Please, this would be a dream and a wish come true. All I know is this team's not getting any worse, and as we come up, we're not gonna get some of the lower tier bowls anymore. We're gonna be shooting for the playoffs. Oh man, they got me. It's the arm forces bowl against Marshall a bowl game nonetheless which we're grateful for but it could have been truly iconic to keep the potatoes on the blue field for the famous Idaho potato bowl for old McDonald this season's been all about pumping the tactician archetype he's maxed out the passing game secondary and blocking so we'll get in-game attribute boosts and then I think our defensive coordinator accepted a job somewhere else because I'm not familiar with Alani Chen a recruiter Austin Young I know we had the elite recruiter so now we have triple boost in the recruiting front early national signing day you scroll down this list and what do you see number 20 in the nation cuna just had their best year yet and best class yet boise state doing what they do usually a good class but no match for the idaho potato kings excited to jump into our bowl game against marshall this is history for the program massive applause for old mcdonald for getting the kings in a position to play in a big game like this bowl season's always so much fun and you can tell cuna has been working hard these farm boys are prepped and ready for the moment to shine and here is the opposition it's going down for real armed forces bowl kickoff 
underway. It's a packed crowd full of Cuna King fans and Marshall fans alike. And there's the man, the myth, the legend, the moneymaker. Old McDonald pumped a lot of his own money into this program and it's starting to pay off. On paper, this is honestly gonna be a really tough game. Both teams are strong in different areas. Mobamba's already blaring first drive, first quarter. You already know that's how it goes here. Sal was stopped short on the first drive and I'm interested to see what version of Cuna we get. I'd prefer the one that steps up to the occasion since it is a big game. It looks like Cuna did their best to come down to Texas and put up a fight. I know this is at TCU Stadium, but why do the signs have to be blaring their logos during a bowl game. I haven't been to the Armed Forces Bowl, so maybe someone else knows, but is that normal during the game? But I know what's not normal is Mitch throwing a lot of picks. Zero to zero with a minute left. That's right. Big sack. It's going to stay that way. Defense has been the story in this one. I don't know who is going to strike first because look at the defense. Both teams refusing to give an inch. That's exactly the type of game this is going to be as there we go. First down. Let's go. 36 seconds. We have to hurry up to the line and strike quickly in this one. Just going to let it rip deep. I think he has a step. Oh, Cropper. What could have and should have been. While getting hit, though, we find Yolito, and hey, I'll take it. Now with 21 seconds to work, I think we got him. He's got a step. Is that our guy, Bell? Who else would it be? Touchdown. Take a bow. Take a bow. You had a season for the ages. The first bowl game touchdown in school history. It's a moment to never forget. Right before half, Marshall suddenly got a burst of inspiration and wanted a touchdown of their own. This time... This play is not going to work. DB was not to be fooled twice, that's for sure. And this read option is going to go the quarterback's way. Marshall trying to thunder their way down the field here and score. Now third and three, what do they have up their sleeve? It's a quick slant and score. So that confirms it. We definitely have a battle on our hands in our first ever bowl game. Brent Aker spinning first and goal. Leaving defense mainly behind in the first half. This second half is all about points. Touchdown, Mitch, into the crowd, jumping over a photographer. One quarter, three minutes of football left to determine the fate of Marshall versus Kuna. They take their three, and now we get a chance to say our part. Gonna go for a one ball here. Intercepted. Are you kidding? Definitely not enough bite from our guys there going back for the ball. So they get a chance to convert, and they do just that all the way to the house touchdown unfortunately heartbreak at the end because of that last score marshall 24 cuna 21 we end in defeat six and seven gonna cap off the third year the fireworks really picked up in the fourth quarter it's just a shame we couldn't bring our school glory at the end of the day that wasn't the finish we were hoping for but now up to one and a half stars in our prestige this team is going somewhere just like all of these seniors graduating congrats there aren't many of them nor any in the 80 overall threshold so besides Brent Aker and Garlic down here. I think we're in the clear. Four players in the transfer portal want to come to CUNA, so we'll go ahead and recruit them all. Or I guess I shouldn't say based on their interest they want to come, but they're at least open to the idea. Plenty of hours to go around for only four guys, so we're pretty much going to max them out. Besides the transfers, we still have some open spots, so I might as well see if there are any guys just out here waiting to be offered. And I'm finding exactly that. Receivers and right ends right now, as well as a couple linebackers. Instead of just going to go after everyone, I'm going to see if there are any gems. Sure Sure as heck not Jermaine Wicks, but Jelani Bags. There we go, Tevin. Congratulations, sir. You just earned yourself a scholarship. One week in the books, good progress on all four transfers that were interested in us. Let's go ahead and top off our list with a few more recruits. And now on National Signing Day, we move up one spot to 19. Boise State had a productive transfer portal, upping three more four stars since we last looked. But dang, the bottom half of the Mountain West is bleak. Brought in four athletes, so I'm gonna need to find a position for them. With trading results, the CUNY Kings are up to an 85 overall, 86 offense, 85 defense going into year four of their existence. It has been a rapid rise up the ranks and this is interesting. Francis has a higher overall than Mitch, but look at this, throw power is worse. Speed is definitely worse. I don't know why I'd start him. He does have good short and middle accuracy, but Mitch is the complete package, essentially. Gage Kavka, the number one player in the nation, comes in at star development, and he's going to be a difference maker, one-two punch. 79 overall is a true freshman. He'll come right behind Sal here in his sophomore season with a lot of badges. I mean, both come equipped with physical and mental badges out the wazoo, so I'm excited about the ground attack. James Vilma from year two recruiting is no longer messing around 
around, sophomore, getting himself right in the lineup. 94 speed makes him the fastest dude out there. A bunch of juniors ahead here on the defensive tackle depth chart, but Chester Spoon is no pushover, 77 overall. Only a normal development that kind of blows, but it's nice to have him here. Checking in on our other five-star player, it's Danny Berger. And bang, we hit that one deep from downtown. Elite development trait. This is your next no-fly zone. He's pretty raw, a lot to learn in a lot of these skill point areas, but he is quick and we know that. Just like that, we're through three years, so I hope you're soaking it up with the Spuds and King Sponge. And if you are, hit that subscribe button, drop a like, leave a comment, let me know what you think to this point as we head in to year number four.